Think of the last big dream that you had when you wanted to achieve something. Maybe you wanted to get fit or maybe you wanted to learn a new skill. Think of how happy it made you dreaming that dream. But did you manage to do it? And if not, why not? And what can you do to make it happen? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior. I'm a neurologist and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything. In today's video, we are talking about the neuroscience of achieving dreams and three neuroscience hacks that you can use to make this possible. Let's go. Dreams are stories that we create for ourselves from our memories, from things that we see, from other people's lives and they are stories that make us feel something. And dreams are always about the future. Someday I will do this. Someday this will happen to me. Like Hrithik Roshan in Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara, where he stands in that big bungalow and thinks, someday I will own a house like this. But why do we like to dream so much? In fact, we like to dream so much that we can get lost in them, where we don't want to come back to our everyday lives. And if somebody reminds us that this is a dream, it feels like a rude shock. But why does this happen? In the brain, dreams come from a part called as the limbic system, which is the emotional part of the brain. Now, the limbic system wants to think about and do things that make it happy or make it go away from sadness. So whenever it comes across any imaginary idea or story that can give it that sense of kick, which is the if it can feel that, it will keep chasing it like it's a drug. So when you find a dream that makes you feel good, you will keep on dreaming it. But the prefrontal cortex part of your brain is more logical. It wants to plan the future. It wants to calculate probability. But the problem is that the prefrontal cortex cannot do its job if the limbic system is distracted, if the limbic system is doing its own trip, which is why the prefrontal cortex has to wait. It has to wait until the limbic calms down and finally say, Acha ho gaya? Ho gaya sapna dekhe. Chalo ab kaam pe lagte hai. And that is what we call getting back to reality. So how can we make dreams come true? Remember that the only thing that can convert thoughts, which are just electric signals in the brain, into reality is actions. So at some point, your body has to do something physical to make things happen. Now, both your limbic and your PFC can do action. But there is a difference. Limbic actions are very short term. In fact, they're not really actions, they are reactions. Bhook lagi hai, khana khate hai. Dar lagi hai, bhaag jate hai. You're angry, let's fight. Everything that the limbic does is very reactionary. And aisa nahi hai ki reaction se sapne pure nahi ho sakte. Some dreams do happen because of reactions. You get some opportunity suddenly and you react in a good way and that dream can come true. But the truth is that most dreams only come true with sustained action over a long term when you consistently plan and execute some things. And this is the job of the prefrontal cortex. So how do we make a dream come true? You have to give power to the prefrontal cortex. As long as the dream remains in limbic, the chances are less that it will come to life. So here are three steps to help you do this. Step number one, Take your dream and write about it. Write about why you want to achieve that dream. Write about how it will make you feel, whether you'll be happy, proud. Write about what motivates you right now. Words are a PFC tool. The more words you use to describe an emotion, the more the PFC understands it. And this is also important because you have to remember your original motivation, your original why. Because at some point when you're struggling with the dream, this why is what will keep you going. Step number two, convert the dream into a goal. Now, what is the difference between dreams and goals? Dreams are abstract ideas placed sometime in the vague future, but goals are tangible targets. Something that can be described clearly and measured in short term, like in weeks to months. For example, if your dream is to get fit, then your goals would be to work out regularly for three months and to lose weight. And it always helps if the goals have some number attached to it. And as you get closer and closer to the dream, your goals can and should keep changing. 
And finally, step number three is to take each goal and break it down into objectives. Now, this is the key step. The difference between achieving and not achieving your dream is how well you can convert it into clean objectives. There is an acronym that you can use to set out your objectives and the acronym is SMART. So what does it stand for? S is specific. Make sure that you describe specifically the objective that you want to achieve. So for example, if you want to lose weight, how much weight? If you want to go to the gym, then how regularly should you go to the gym? Twice a week, thrice a week or every day? M is for measurable. Your objective has to be easily measurable so that it is easier to keep track of it. If your objective is something like, I want to feel good every day, that's not something that you can measure and keep track. So that's not a great objective. Number three is achievable. Is the objective that you have set achievable for you? And the only way you can know about this is by comparing it with your previous patterns. And this is very important because of the failure ratio that I will talk about after this. R is for relevant. Does your objective fit in with the larger picture of your dream? And T is time bound. Always set a time limit for when you want to achieve your objective by. Now, how do you know if you're on track to achieve your objectives? Every month do a review of how far you've come, where you've reached and what did you not do? Now, suppose you reached your target objective only 10% of the time. Clearly the difficulty level of that objective is too high and you need to set easier targets for yourself. But suppose if you were able to do it 100% of the time, you could actually increase the difficulty of your objective and aim higher. In fact, there is an ideal failure rate of one in four, which means that if 25% of the times you fail, that is good. It keeps you motivated. Learning to adjust the difficulty level of the objectives you set for yourself is key to achieving your dreams. So what are the challenges here? Why aren't everyone able to achieve their dreams? The main challenge is emotions. Remember that dreams come from the limbic system and the limbic system wants to feel good all the time. It wants to feel sexy. It wants to feel validated. It wants to feel like it has achieved something amazing, even if it is just in imagination. But when the PFC decides to set goals and go after objectives, this is a longer road where the rewards happen much later. And so the limbic system can get frustrated. It might run out of patience and it might convince the PFC. It might overpower the PFC and say that, forget about this. Let me start dreaming about something else now because it's new, it's exciting and my rewards are immediate. This is why you must celebrate small wins. Make the limbic feel good for the small achievements that you get along the way. Like if you're on a long road journey and there's a child in the car and the child is cranky, you give the child a toy to play with so that it is calm while you reach your end goal. That is how you should think of your limbic system. Keep celebrating it, congratulating it for the small wins and your overall journey will be much calmer. And eventually when you achieve your goals and you can see your dream coming true, the anticipation of that will convince the limbic system also to join in. And then the limbic and your PFC will work together to make your dreams come true. And that is one of the best feelings ever. Anyone who has found true passion in their lives will have experienced this where there is no more conflict and every part of their brain actually wants to do the same thing. And that is what flow state means. A final word of advice, don't tell too many people about your dreams because this is also a trick that the limbic system pulls to get some quick and cheap validation. In fact, don't tell them until you have set your goals and you've started achieving your objectives. Once you realize that you've hit your ideal failure rate, that is when you can start telling people so that they can hold you accountable and give you that added motivation. But till then, Prematurely sharing your dreams can be counterproductive because the limbic has already gotten its validation because people have said, oh wow, that sounds amazing. And now the limbic feels ki acha, abhi mujhe kuch nahi karna hai, mujhe dopamine kick to mil gaya hai. Share this video with your friends who are aiming high and like this video so that it can reach to more people. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me and it acts as a motivation boost for me to keep creating more such content for you guys. So all the best to all of you. Good luck for the new year and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.